Okay, so we're going to look at the green, uh, Green's theorem in this video, but before we get to that, we need some preliminary ideas. And now we already know what a smooth curve C is, as we've seen earlier in the earlier video on line integrals. Now we're going to look at uh, another concept to do with uh, uh, curves, which is, let me just, best thing is to just draw it. Now, it's called orientation. Now, orientation means that, um, you know, positive orientation, for instance, means that um, that there is like, um, uh, uh, the convention is that if you see the arrows here, so the, this is a region D and the curve C here, basically it's like the, the, a path and you're walking along this path for instance and the region D, if it's the enclosed region is on your left, we say that the curve is positively oriented. So this is a positively oriented curve. Uh, otherwise you can just say it's um, uh, anti-clockwise, all right? it's anti-clockwise, in the anti-clockwise direction. As you see, these arrows are anti-clockwise. Now, on the other hand, you could also have something like this, where the arrows are going this way, okay, okay, and this would mean, this would be negatively oriented. This is negatively oriented. Negatively oriented, in other words, it's uh, in the clockwise direction. So this is the concept of uh, how curves are oriented. Uh, so now we come to the statement of Green's theorem. We're now in a position to start looking at that. So uh, let's say the statement of Green's theorem. It says, let's say that C is a positively oriented piecewise smooth simple closed curve in the plane and let D be the region bounded by C. Uh, if PXY and QXY have continuous partial derivatives on an open region that contains D, then the statement is that the line integral PDX plus QDY now, of course, please note that you have to have done the previous videos if you don't already understand this uh, PDX QDY type of integral, then you need to have seen that before in earlier um, line in the earlier videos on line integrals. But uh, but hopefully, if you know, then you don't need to go back to that. But anyway, so what what is saying is on there's the, there's our C here. Okay, there's our C. Now there are two terms here that you that we've already talked about. Uh, several, the uh, sorry, there are several terms you need to be careful about. Word smooth, as you know, we've already defined that before as a curve that doesn't have corners. And then there are, of course, definitions of it which come through the parametrization that it must be a curve that you can parametrize. And then the, you know the derivatives x dash, y dash, z dash, uh, uh, the sum of them squared, all each one cannot be zero. But anyway, you can go to a previous video to see the exact definition of it. Simple means something as well. Simple is uh, a simple closed curve is one that does not intersect itself. Okay, it does not intersect itself. So, um, uh, and then of course, positively oriented, positively oriented. So there are several terms like this is positively oriented, smooth, and simple closed curve. Okay, these are properties of this particular curve C. Okay, the region D that's enclosed by it. So the example would be this one, for instance. This could be a possible curve that we're talking about. It's positively oriented, and the region D is closed within it, and this uh, itself, this curve that you see is C. Now, this is a simple closed curve. It doesn't intersect itself. Okay, it is positively oriented because it's uh, anti-clockwise, uh, the, the direction uh, is oriented uh, anti-clockwise. Uh, it's a smooth curve um, because it doesn't have any corners, um, most likely. Okay, so now, so this is what we're talking about. Now, Green's theorem basically is a very interesting, very powerful idea, which is uh, still used in, in uh, as a research tool as well in a lot of, you will still find it in a lot of research papers, people still use this very powerful idea. and. One of the things it does, uh, which is very interesting, is how it takes a line integral and changes it into a double integral, in fact. They need, the C has to be defined, and then one can actually apply Green's theorem. The prerequisites are simply requirements on C, and the requirements on P and Q are simply that the first derivative should exist. And then one can easily uh, calculate. Uh, so let's look at some examples, because the best thing is to look at, uh, at the applications of Green's theorem. So let's do that. So here, this example is uh, integrate um, x4 dx plus xy dy over c, where c is the triangular curve with line segments from 0, 0 to 1, 0, 1, 0 to 0, 1, and from 0, 1 uh, back to 0, 0. So here I've actually already drawn this for you. So I'll just change the color to show you here what we're, what's going on is this is, this is our uh, c, in fact, then 
in this direction and then back in this direction so there there's our triangle uh, the triangular curve and that's uh, basically our C if we can see it is positively oriented it is clearly um, uh, it's a, a piecewise smooth it is not smooth uh, all together but it is three line segments that are all smooth so joined together um, so we can easily uh, we can say that it's a piecewise a smooth a simple closed curve because it doesn't intersect in, its, it, in itself but if you looked at it overall a triangle is not really smooth altogether but it is piecewise smooth so but um, Green's theorem simply requires that it be piecewise smooth so this means that uh, we can actually proceed with Green's theorem so our prerequisites are satisfied now if you compare this to the theorem you'll see that this is your P here and this uh, QDY now be careful this is DX and DX dy and dy sometimes in questions these might be switched around so you need to be careful and what you're doing because when you compare the theorem here you are doing the integration with the differentiation with respect to x and with respect to y here so this means that uh, this means that um, this is going to be equal to the double integral over the region that's over there this is d here okay and it's going to be in fact um, uh, the 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 x derivative of xy which is y okay and um, minus the uh, y derivative of p which is zero okay so it's uh, rather straightforward and of course da so now what we've done is essentially we've changed the line integral uh, problem to a problem of solving a double integral okay which we can very easily solve now what region are we talking about of course we are talking about um, in this case uh, our range of values of x this is the x and y uh, of course going on here so your x is going from 0 to 1 and your y is of course going from y equals 0 to y equals uh, clearly 1 minus x um, okay so it's going from 0 to 1 minus x because that line is y equals 1 minus x okay so therefore that's our uh, that's the integral that we're calculating and of course it's over y so it will now be dy dx so it's very easily done uh, and that gives us uh, just y squared over 2 and the y squared over 2 just becomes a half integral 0 1 of 1 minus x all squared now dx which then we can very easily also integrate and uh, that turns out to be minus 1 sixth okay 1 minus x all cubed from 0 to 1 and the final answer turns out to be one sixth. So as you can as you can see, what we've done is we've very easily calculated this double integral, which we are familiar with, and it's quite easy to do uh, using uh, Green's theorem. Let's look at another example. Another example. This is again uh, we are applying Green's theorem. Now you'll see a little new thing here. This symbol. Uh, this indi this indicates a closed curve. Okay. Now since Green's theorem is about simple closed curves that which means that don't intersect each other many times you will see this notation and it simply gives some more information that we're dealing with this with a with a closed curve so green's uh, theorem is over c which is a circle x squared plus y squared equals nine and of course we know cir uh, circles are fine and we're looking at a positively oriented circle so we're looking at this circle here oriented anti-clockwise and so therefore green's theorem is applicable quite easily here uh, and what happens is that this would be our p and this would be our Q uh, so this integral would become the double integral over the region D where this is our region D and its integral um, it's basically going to be the um, remember it's the uh, X derivative of Q so the X derivative of Q turns out to be 7 only from this okay it's just 7 and um, then we'll have minus the um, the Y derivative of uh, P so the y derivative of uh, p turns out to be in this case just three and you can see how simple uh, it boils down to something extremely easy all right so it's seven minus three essentially which is just the number four in fact okay da so now um it's best we use polar coordinates so so our integral therefore is going to be from zero to two pi the the radius of the circle is three so you're 0 to 3 essentially here and that means you're just doing 4 dr dr d theta so in polar coordinates and that boils down to something piece of cake essentially 
which is just going to be 0 to 2 pi and that's going to be just um, uh, r dr so uh, the 4 is outside uh, so that's going to be r squared over r squared over 2 3 9 so that's going to be 8 uh, yes r squared r squared over 2 okay so it's going to be r squared over 2 from 0 to 3 okay and that's going to be equal to at the end 36 pi okay when you work it out so uh, sorry there i forgot the dr that's dr oh d theta sorry d theta okay so anyway that works out to be 36 pi